Welcome to our review on health and diet. First thing we need to understand then is what we actually mean when we're talking about a balanced diet. So when we refer to a balanced diet, what we're referring to is a diet that's going to contain the right amount of all of the different foods and energy to keep you healthy. What we can see in the table then are the different foods or nutrients that you need and why you actually need it. So first of all we need carbohydrates which are made of simple sugars like glucose and the reason why we need it is because it gives us energy and that's the same reason that we actually need fats in our diet as well and remember fats are made of fatty acids and glycerol. Our proteins made of amino acids are very important to us because we use our proteins for growth and repair and we can also use them as an energy source. We need our minerals like iron because iron helps us make haemoglobin which is part of our red blood cells. We need vitamin C in our diet because it prevents a condition called scurvy. We need plenty of fibre in our diet to avoid constipation. And we also need water in our diet to prevent us becoming dehydrated. One thing to bear in mind is that there is no one diet that suits everyone. The diet that you should eat will vary with a variety of different factors. So as your age changes, your diet will need to change. Different religions will have different diets because some religions obviously ban people eating certain substances. You may have medical reasons. So if you've got a nut allergy, obviously you're not gonna be eating any nuts. Your gender is gonna have an effect. So whether you're male or female, your different activity levels. Someone who is a builder up and down ladders all day long is gonna need an awful lot more energy than someone who sits at a computer all day long. And then finally, personal choices. So if you've chosen to become a vegetarian, for example, then clearly your diet is going to be very different to someone who is not a vegetarian. The first of the calculations in our B1 topic is what's called the EAR or the Estimated Average Requirement of Protein. Now, the good news is that on your exam paper, they'll print the actual formula so you don't have to memorize it at all. All you need to do is read the question carefully to find out what the body mass of the person is. Then once you've got that, all you do is 0.6 times their body mass in kilograms, and that tells you how much protein they should be eating each day in grams. There are some countries around the world where their inhabitants will not have enough protein in their diet. Now, there's a couple of reasons behind this. One may be down to overpopulation, therefore there's not enough food available to them. And the second one may be because they're not such a well-off country and therefore they've only got a very limited investment in agriculture, meaning obviously the food supplies are much more limited. If people aren't getting enough protein in a diet, then they can suffer from this protein deficiency disease called kwashiorkor. Now, this is very distinctive in its characteristics. If you look at the picture at the bottom there, you can see three children that are suffering with kwashiorkor. So you can look at their arms and see how thin they are, very thin legs as well. And then this almost abnormal when you see how thin their arms and legs are, this very swollen belly. Now that's not fat, that swollen belly is caused by a buildup of fluid inside. Now what we find as a result of Kwashiorkor is that they can't fight infections very well either. So you can see they're certainly not looking very healthy in that picture. And then you can also compound that with the fact that they don't have a very good immune system. The lack of protein isn't just a problem in developing countries. In the developed countries like ours, what we will find is that there are still people who suffer with this lack of protein. However, unlike the developing countries where it's down to the lack of the right food being available, in countries like ours, it's more down to the choice not to eat that much. And that's usually linked in to low self-esteem or poor self-image. So when we've got people who are suffering from things like anorexia and bulimia, then they're not going to be having enough intake in their body to actually maintain their body weight. So what we actually find is if this gets very severe and the images you can see there are quite severe cases, then we can actually end up with very serious heart problems, poor health, and it can actually kill you. So it's very important to make sure that when you are thinking about your own body weight, that you're not going by some stereotype image of what the media portrays as the ideal body weight, that you are actually making sure that you are eating enough and not making yourself ridiculously thin. B 
BMI is the second calculation we need to do in B1. So to calculate the BMI is going to be the mass in kilograms of the person divided by their height in meters squared. So this is, needs to be a very careful calculation. The way you use your calculator is going to be important in getting the right answer here. So some of your calculators that you use, when you hit that square button at the end, it squares the whole answer. We only want it to square the height. So make sure you play around with your calculator prior to going to the exam to make sure that you know that if you hit that square button, it's only going to be squaring the height. Okay, make sure that that is how you use your calculator. So in your question, you will get someone saying about their body mass being such and such in kilograms, their height is such and such. The one thing to watch there, and they sometimes throw this in, is they will put the height in centimeters. So make sure you convert the height from centimeters into meters, first of all, by dividing by 100. Then we're going to square the height, and whatever that answer is, is what we divide the mass in kilograms by. That then gives us the value for our BMI, or the body mass index. And then you can look it up with those reference values at the bottom to identify whether someone is the correct weight or not. So if they're under 18, then they're underweight. 18 to 25 is normal. 25 to 30 takes them to the overweight category. And over 30 is in the obese category. So this is something that we can actually use to just reference where someone's weight falls in terms of their height. Because we can't just turn around and say, oh, if you're 14 years old, then you should be 50 kilograms. Because obviously people of different heights will therefore need to be a different body mass to be healthy. Finally, one of the big problems that faces the world today is obesity. So we've got an awful lot of obese people living around the world. And the big problems that we find there is that people who are obese are actually a bit of a drain on the health systems. Because if you're obese, you are far more likely to suffer from heart disease, from diabetes, arthritis and breast cancer. And all of those obviously require treatment on the NHS. So just as a result of poor eating habits leading to obesity, we've got all of these other diseases that we then have to cater for.